Hi, everybody. Meteorologist Joe Chaffee here. Weather in five, five days and five minutes. We're going to go longer than that today because we do have a lot going on. Uh, first off, uh, just uh, want to start things off with Tropical Storm Fred, which is now Tropical Depression Fred, moving north-northeast through northern Georgia. And you can see this arcing band of very heavy rains. Uh, in fact, uh, as of uh, shortly before 9 a.m. Eastern Time, a little uh, tornado warning has spot, uh, has popped up there uh, east of Atlanta and flash flood uh, warnings up for uh, the areas in and around Atlanta. So uh, the uh, remnant low is going to take its track up to the northeast and we are already beginning to prime the atmosphere up here in the northeast and northern mid-Atlantic states as we get a warm front pushing northward and that's going to gradually transition us transition this area over into a, a very tropical air mass which is the environment that these systems usually function in as they move on up to the northeast gonna have more on all of this in just a second do a little business here weather and five brought to you by omni true value hardware at 1226 north wellwood avenue in west babylon 631-756-1125 is the phone number for the best prices in town omnitruevalue.com is the website and wholesale holiday lighting by giannini your complete holiday lighting specialist meeting all your decorating needs at 162 ocean avenue in lindenhurst new york also on long island 631-957-5106 phone number and the website is liholidaylighting.com so we've got uh, two active name storms out there we have tropical storm grace which is now uh, getting ready to thread the needle between South Cuba and Jamaica, and also Tropical Storm Henri, which has gotten a little stronger and looks better organized on the satellite. We're going to talk about both of those systems. First things first, as we go back to Fred from the satellite view, you see that circulation, uh, the low-level circulation is pretty obvious on the southern end of this very large cloud band that's streaming on up to the northeast. Now, let me just say with respect to the rainfall it's going to come in waves over the next several days and the further inland you are from the coast the better the chance that you're going to get into some of these waves if you're east of i-95 generally along and east of i-95 yeah you're going to get some rain out of this but it's not going to be any big deal it's going to come in a in a couple of waves and there will be dry periods in between if you're from the I-95 corridor, basically north and west, you're going to see steadier, heavier rain when these waves go by. And if you are along or west the I-81 corridor, uh, that's where I think you could probably see rain substantial enough to bring in a flash flood risk. Now, bear in mind that those uh, points that I'm uh, indicating, the two, main, the, the two main north-south interstates, are not exact. So there's no magic line that is drawn at I-95. There's no magic line that's drawn at I-81. So just use your common sense in terms of where you're located with respect uh, to these to these areas. Uh, at the end of the day, this is nothing that we would normally experience during a typical late summer, early fall season when the tropics are very active. And again, we're seeing that saturation of the atmosphere beginning to go on in the northeast. You're going to see those dew points rising the uh, old frontal boundary from late last week is coming back up as a warm front and you see it analyzed here this morning with a low in lake erie and a warm front that runs across pennsylvania northwest to southeast down to about chesapeake bay so in to the south of there is the truly tropical air where we've got dew points up in the upper 60s and, and low 70s and then further south the remnant low center and this was at the last map plop was at 5 a.m. Eastern Time, so the low center was right on the uh, central border of Alabama and Georgia, probably now pretty close to Atlanta in terms of the low center, and then heading on up into northeastern Georgia later today. Here's WPC's rainfall amounts, and again, this pretty much lines up with what I said. If you go, if you look around from the I-95 corridor, that light green area is anywhere from one to as much as two inches. And that's all going to be spread out over the course of two or three days. Uh, this is a rainfall map that, uh, rainfall map that takes us to 8 a.m. Friday uh, morning. 
Uh, the darker greens, we're looking at two to four inches of rainfall in that stretch. And in the stripes of yellow, which you see in extreme northeastern Pennsylvania and on up on the west side of the Catskills and around Binghamton, there's a patch there of four to six. Further south, uh, we're looking at, of course, much of the rain occurred overnight in uh, southern Georgia, so that's pretty much winding down and over with. But in north Georgia, when this is all said and done, we're looking at the northeastern corner of Georgia, four to six inches of rain extending into western North Carolina and then on up the Appalachian Mountains. Looks like WPCs kind of push the rainfall arc a little bit further to the west in terms of the heavier rain, uh, the two to four inch rains back over into West Virginia. Uh, and uh, extending uh, northeast from there, uh, as opposed to yesterday when that uh, arc of dark green was also covering western Virginia and areas up into central Maryland. So it looks like they kind of backed off a little bit uh, f from from that. Here's the uh, Hurricane Center's uh, forecast uh, with the track of the low. Anytime lows go west of the Appalachians, uh, that usually is much less of a problem uh, from the certainly from the standpoint of wind because we don't have anything coming down and, and juicing this system up uh, making it into a strong non-tropical or post-tropical low instead it's just going to be the remnant lows kind of an identifiable feature that moves along with mostly rain and not much uh, not much else but the further once then when they go west of the Appalachians the rain cuts off uh, rather decisively uh, as you head into the coastal plain uh, from uh, southeast Virginia on up into uh, south coastal New England, including everybody in between. So that's why the rainfall amounts are going to be less, and that's why I kind of use the I-95 uh, indicator uh, as to where this is going. Now, let's run through the tropics. So we've got Tropical Storm Grace, again, going to pass very close to Jamaica. It's in the process of doing so. Uh, maybe the center passes just off shore or skims the north coast of Jamaica and then continues on a west to west northwest course pretty much right through the next several days. There's nothing uh, going on in the upper atmosphere uh, that is going to create a weakness and allow grace to turn. So this is just going to be on a steady west northwest course. Conditions in the Caribbean are favorable for strengthening. I think there's a chance it could become a hurricane before it makes uh, a landfall over the Yuc northern Yucatan Peninsula and then into the southwest Gulf from there. Then it may become a hurricane again as it heads towards the uh, coast of Mexico, probably somewhere uh, near uh, Tampico. In the meantime, here's uh, Fred's uh, remnant low forecast going north and west of the coast. So uh, again, if we use uh, the, let's use the easternmost track, that's kind of where the heaviest rain is going to be, north and west of that arc and then as you go south and east you're going to see um, far less uh, there'll be some heavy downpours but nothing you can't handle grace's intensity uh, forecast here uh, taking it over into uh, minimal hurricane status twice and actually a couple of the models push it up almost to a cat three uh, the uh, first uh, approach the first bulge up is when it uh, heads towards the northern part of the yucatan and the second part is when it moves on up uh, into Mexico. And there's the uh, the tracking models. Not a single one is making any kind of a turn uh, toward the north. Now, uh, here's how it looks on the GFS. Uh, it, it doesn't rain continuously. Uh, if we uh, just kind of look back at the radar just for a moment, uh, you'll notice there's a, this, this wave of rain that's moved up into upstate New York this morning and heading up into western New England. There's a decisive break in between, and then there's some more rain that's setting up back through western Pennsylvania down into West Virginia. Most of that's going to pass north and west of, of uh, eastern PA to southern New England, at least initially. Uh, there are some showers uh, that have popped up during this morning in parts of uh, Maryland there. Uh, they sort of renegade showers, but we might see some in activity increase there <clears throat> as the day goes on. So if we watch the, the GFS model, this is for this morning. Moving into this afternoon, another area of rain develops in eastern PA, uh, the eastern half of PA. The uh, Fred rain is still down in northern Georgia into eastern Tennessee and western North Carolina. Uh, so we get, this is what we're seeing here for late today and tonight is the warm front actually going by. So you see that the first round of downpours moves out, we get a break, then a second round of downpours tomorrow morning. Fred's up in West Virginia at this point, then a break, then another round that comes in tomorrow evening into early Thursday morning, and then it's out. 
Again, notice east of I-95, there's not a whole lot of rain that falls out of this. Uh, it's a little more active as you go uh, along uh, and west of I-81, where we would expect the, ch the chance that there could be some flash flooding. After we get into Thursday, there's another little disturbance that's coming along for uh, Thursday night into Friday, and it, it brings some showers and storms into PA, but doesn't really do much with it after that. There's a band after Wednesday evening that goes by, so then we'll start to go over <clears throat> and transition into something more typical with respect to uh, a tropical air mass in August, where there'll be some scattered downpours and thunderstorms that'll develop in the afternoon and evening uh, on, uh, on Friday, and again on Saturday, uh, and probably again on Sunday. But much of the time, I'm thinking it's going to be uh, on the uh, dry side from the standpoint of rain. Get ready for it to be very muggy, very humid, and temperatures uh, will be trying to edge up into the 80s each day. Uh, but as we get toward the end of the week, it's going to be more like middle to upper 80s. And, and over the weekend, it's going to be more like middle to upper 80s. I'm going to just back this up. <clears throat> South of Bermuda this morning is Tropical Storm Henri. Uh, and uh, this run of the GFS did something very interesting. It's something that I pointed out yesterday was possible. I'm not necessarily believing that this is going to be how this turns out. Uh, but I, I did mention yesterday that there was one concern of mine that it would drift far enough west and then turn northward. And if it were to strengthen as it did that, uh, we uh, could wind up with some tidal and surf issues. And this last run of the GFS actually brought uh, Henri uh, not too far from Cape Cod, or at least it tried to bring in some rain come uh, later Sunday night into Monday morning as uh, it head, heads up into the Gulf of Maine. So I'm sure this is probably going to get some attention, but I just want to make a couple of points here. The uh, GFS model, from what I saw, was really the only model of uh, that of consequence today this last run that did this uh the uh, other models are, are are much further to the east now maybe they'll catch up on the next model runs that come in later today we'll see but in terms of the <clears throat> hurricane tracking models there are a couple of outliers that bring it um offshore uh, cape cod but by a fair distance here uh, this would, again, be more of an impact in terms of maybe rough surf if you're headed to the beach or possibly some higher than normal tides. But they all are doing the idea of this recurve offshore. So uh, I, I'm just going to kind of go along with this idea. Uh, it's a prove-it-to-me situation as far as weather is concerned. So we'll wait to see what some later model runs uh, do with this. Um, I thought yesterday that the possibility was there that something like this could happen, but I'm still not on that page. I'm just, you know, again, just kind of watching things as they evolve. And as you look at the intensity models for Henri, uh, we do have a couple of them that uh, bring it up into minimal hurricane status in about three or four days. Uh, but the vast majority of the models keep Henri <clears throat> a tropical storm. And there are some upper air issues to contend with in terms of wind shear that puts uh, the uh, existence of Henri in doubt for the longer term, at least from what we're seeing at the moment. So that pretty much covers it today. It was uh, a lot to look at uh, with uh, everything going on. Weather in 5 brought to you by Omni True Value Hardware, 1226 North Wellwood Avenue in West Babylon, 631-756-1125 is the phone number. Best prizes in town on, on mulch, topsoil, gravel. Uh, when it comes time, winter time, rock salt because you know that time is coming soon. And emergency preparedness supplies, in case you need to beef up on those, uh, they do have plenty of them in stock. And the website is omnitruevalue.com. Wholesale holiday lighting by Giannini will put you in the Christmas mood. They're your complete holiday lighting specialist, meeting all your decorating needs. If you want your home professionally decorated, or maybe you want to do it as a business, they're at 162 Ocean Avenue in Lindenhurst. 631-957-5106 is the phone number there. And the website is liholidaylighting.com. So uh, kind of busy here with all these tropical systems running around. It's kind of funny how we go from virtually no activity to having three named systems on the map. That oftentimes that's how it goes in the world of the tropics. Uh, we'll go through all of this and then some tonight on the Joe and Joe Weather Show at 7.30 Eastern Time. So do tune in for that. And uh, there's more weather coverage every day on my subscription weather platform at patreon.com slash meteorologist Joe Chaffee. The link pops up on the screen every once in a while here. Uh, 
it's uh, just they start the tiers start at two dollars a month. Uh, it's a, a great way to get yourself uh, into a weather conversation in a non-drama environment, along with uh, extra posts, extra videos when conditions warrant, and much more. And you can message me anytime. So that's at patreon.com slash meteorologist Joe Chaffee. All right, folks, we will uh, see you later.